This is a plaque on the trunk of a 25 year old patient. No skin. Just look around here. Kind of a lot of different stuff going on. It looks very heterogeneous, right? It's a hard case. I struggled when I saw my first one of these two. And I've struggled again with them since. But I was really baffled by this. So I'll tell you, the... The pitfall here is to look at this thing and see um, spindly kind of tumor with fat trapping, right? Honeycomb, fat entrapment, and to think DFSP. It'd be understandable. The thing that'd be a little weird for DFSP is that it's not just like fat trapping. It's like way down here mixed in with the subcutaneous tissue. Look, there's all these like big vessels that it's like wrapped around and like kind of intervened between it. And while yes, DFSP is infiltrative and can do that, this is not like as, I don't know, something about it's almost like too patchy down in here. I don't know how to explain that really. The other thing is that in this case, the cytology is not quite right for DFSP. Yes, it's bland and monotonous, but it's not, it's, some of it's spindled, but a lot of it's more like little oval or round nuclei, right? See? Very bland, very, very benign appearing, but so is DFSP, which is, that's where the pitfall, because this, this tumor is actually more often like bland spindle cells that look very much like dermatofibrous sarcoma protuberans, and that's why the pit, it's an important pitfall to know about. See here, it's more spindled. Bland spindle cells with fat trapping. So these are Wagner-Meissner bodies. They're little little um, structures that are recapitulating Meissner's corpuscles. Like each one, it looks kind of similar to a to a Meissner's corpuscle, right? See, like here's like one little circle. Here's another one. Here's another one. Another one. They're like all clustered together. This tumor is S100 and SOX10 positive and CD34 positive. This is a diffuse neurofibroma in a patient with neurofibromatosis and they can they can have spindled bland spindle cells a lot like that that look more like neurofibroma but the this is tricky because in diffuse neurofibroma there are two things number one you get you often get lots of infiltration or intermingling with the fat it's not it's not a aggressive growing like a dfsp it's just intermingling with the background fat that's there um, I mean, they, they can be very, they're not aggressive, rapidly growing tumors, but they can be very large and disfiguring in patients with neurofibromatosis. So they're, they are benign, but they can cause significant morbidity, okay, when they're large. But um, because of the fat entrapment, it, and because of the fact that neurofibromas use the CD34 positive, they can closely mimic dermatofibrous sarcoma protuberans, okay? The other thing is that the diffuse form of neurofibroma uh, in contrast to the more conventional types of neurofibroma that we see as little, like the little nodular form you see in the skin, that the cells tend to be more rounded, oval to round nuclei than spindled. They can be spindled, but you'll often see kind of a more rounding. And because of that, sometimes they can get kind of cellular, almost sheet-like areas that are more cellular than this and made of round cells to the point that I've seen some and they reminded me of like a round blue cell tumor, except that they had like no mitoses and nothing to indicate malignancy, but I was very perplexed when I first saw one of these in fellowship and thought, how are there all these round cells? And then Dr. Weiss explained that in diffuse neurofibroma that you tend to have kind of more rounded cells. So it, when you're lucky, you'll find Wagner, Meissner bodies. Look, they're everywhere here. We got them uh, here, here, here. So Wagner, Meissner bodies are uh, typically seen. They're kind of the classic finding in the diffuse type of neurofibroma, although you don't always see them. And remember that neurotized nevi can get things that look just like Wagner Meister bodies as well, although they're not going to be so big and deep, but this thing is way down in the subcutis. The other thing is I've seen this a couple times now, 
where you have this kind of unusual like striped kind of tiger stripe pattern. Maybe it's actually better from lower power. Isn't that interesting? It's like it's like uh, lining up in these kind of rows that makes this like kind of stripy tigroid sort of pattern. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's been described, but I, I don't remember reading about it. But I've just I've noticed that at least I think this case and one other, if I recall correctly, where I had this kind of unusual like row like orientation. So it's kind of a fascinating tumor, but just the take homes. Remember that diffuse neurofibroma entraps fat totally normal. It can mimic DFSP and neurofibroma CD thirty four positive. So do S one hundred SOX ten if you're having any problems because DFSP almost never expresses those. I have seen one only one example of fibrosarcomatous DFSP that had patchy real S one hundred expression, and it totally blew my mind. Only one case ever. So um, in ge as a general rule, DFSP should be negative for S one hundred and SOX ten. Okay, of course, if we do this long enough, we'll find weird exceptions to all the rules eventually. And there's more of those Wagner mice in their bodies. And there's some more kind of spindly area of the neurofibroma.